Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. Today we are checking in on my April budget, which will hopefully be the last month that I will have been budgeting in lockdown. Fingers crossed, we shall see. I feel like if 2020 taught us anything, it's just not to get too excited about things. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully this will be my last budgeting whilst in lockdown exercise and as of May, things in Scotland are reopened, so hopefully going forward these videos might be a little bit more interesting, have a little bit more to say. But in contrast to last week's hour and a half movie marathon, thank you very much if you watched that one when I checked in about how my low buy is going. Today's April budget check-in should be, I think, reasonably, I hesitate to say short and snappy because they're not exactly my buzzwords, but more watchable, more condensed, a little bit shorter, a little bit snappier. So yeah, let's just get on into it. In the month of March, I had £2.14 left unspent, which meant I opened April with a budget of £252.14. If you remember, my aims from the month of March were to spend under £50 on food at work for the month of April, and to try and save £100 out of my budget. Let's get on into whether that happened or not. In terms of beauty services, I spent £1.50 in the month of April and that was on a deposit for my hair appointment which will happen in the month of May. So it wasn't really on anything that I actually got a service with in April. Um, things just kind of started reopening midway through April towards the end of the month. So I didn't have any actual appointments in the month. So only the £1.50 spent there. I didn't spend anything at all on beauty service replacement items, miscellaneous services or experiences. So zero spends in all three of those categories. Then eating out. I spent £36.40 in the month of April on eating out. So not too bad. I did meet my friend once and I had one takeaway. So I feel like that's all right. Obviously I'm kind of, I've said before now that lockdown restrictions are easing and I'm going to be socialising a bit more. I think that category is going to come up and it's going to be one I'm going to need to keep an eye on, but at the moment it's all right. We then get on to work lunches, my villain of the piece. I feel like the work lunches budget and me are like each other's nemesis. So it was supposed to be £50, that's what I was aiming to spend under this month, and I spent £73.82. I know what happened is that I sort of started the month not really caring about what I was eating so much, I wasn't in a great place and then halfway through the month, and this will come up in entertainment, I got back on to Spotify after cancelling it and the weather's got a bit better this month so I started running again and once I started doing that I started wanting to eat a bit better but I wasn't organised about wanting to eat better so I started buying things like salmon, prawns for lunch, which add up quite quickly expenditure-wise, even though it actually wasn't all that much food. And I feel like for the month of May, I feel like I'm back into sort of trying to eat a little bit better and planning that into my weekly shop, which I don't take from my budget. So I am hoping in May to get under the 50. And I've also been weaning myself a little bit off Diet Coke. I've been Still drinking it, but pushing the dilution just a little bit more, so we'll see how that affects my budget. But yeah, I'm not very pleased because obviously I was aiming to spend under a certain amount, which I didn't, but I kind of know why it happened. So hopefully in the month of May, we get under the 50. Moving on to entertainment. If you remember in the month of March, entertainment was quite an expensive month. It was 62.46. And what I did at the end of March was I suspended my Audible membership. So I didn't pay Audible in the month of April because I bought the extra credits in March. So I'll link up March's video if you haven't watched it. You can go get kind of filled in in that. So it meant this month I wasn't paying Audible. So at the start of the month I paid £5 which was my Patreon payment. And I paid 9 99 for Netflix. Now I also cancelled Spotify. And as I just said when I was talking about my work lunches... I basically, the weather got a bit better, I wanted to get out walking again and I started doing the Couch to 5k again and I ended up getting Spotify back in my life. So 
I re-signed up for Spotify on the 14th of the month so I did do two weeks without it but yeah for all it annoys me that because it's another 9 99 a month paying for Spotify and it's you know paying it every single month and there's not like an annual subscription option or anything it has been worth it in terms of like it makes a big impact on my running which makes a big impact on how I feel um, makes an impact on the way that I eat. I feel like I'm a very all or nothing person so I'm kind of either being healthy or I'm not being healthy and just it sounds really simple but just having Spotify to sort of change up my music and keep me interested and keep me focused more on what I'm listening to than on the fact I am trying to keep running because I'm a terrible runner. I feel like calling it running is such a joke because if any of you saw me actually doing it you'd be like that's 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 trotting if it's anything. It's like, you know, barely lifting your feet off the ground. It's somewhere in between power walking and jogging. Like, I don't even know if I'd call it jogging. But, you know, I feel a lot better when I'm doing it. Um, so I did last the first two weeks of the month and then I ended up paying for Spotify again. So that was another 9 99 And then I spent £5 on a lottery thing that we're doing in work, which is kind of one of those ones where... It's a bit like everyone's doing it and you don't want to be the person not doing it, but I'm also a bit like, I'm not really getting any joy out of this. But it's just one of those social spends. It is what it is. So that was, oh, and then actually yesterday I spent £3 on an Audible download. They, so Audible had their sale on and I pay, I think, £7.99 or £8.99 a month for Audible. Obviously I didn't pay it this month, so I've not written it down, but they had their sale on where some of their books were three pounds and obviously that's cheaper than me using my credit to buy this particular book so I downloaded Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterston if anybody is interested and um, so it's three pounds I think the sale ends today when I'm filming this though so I don't know if it'll still be on when I put this up but I spent the three pounds so that took me to 32 pounds and 98 pence spent on entertainment in the month of April. Then I didn't spend anything at all on tools for hobbies. If I had then not spent anything else I would have saved my hundred pounds basically but I ran out of SPF so I needed to replace my SPF which meant I spent in replacements. So this year my replacements are coming from my budget which they weren't before. And I really liked the SPF that I finished, it was the Darfan one, it was the Intral and I looked it up and it was £39 and I did really like it and I was a bit like, mm, I've got the budget but I'm trying to save the money and I decided I wasn't going to get that one, I was going to get the La Roche-Posay one which was around the £20 mark so it was like half the price. What then happened was that Cult Beauty had their sunshine box, the packaging was like this, it was called the Sunshine Edit and this box was £40 and in this box you got all of these things. The main thing for me was the Dr Dennis Gross Dark Spot Sun Defence SPF 50 and this is £46 on its own usually, it's a 50ml so you were getting the full size of this in this box which was £40 which essentially meant everything else in the box was kind of a bonus. So as well as that SPF, the box had the Supergroup Unseen Sunscreen SPF 30, a little 15ml size, which will be good for going to London. Then you also got an After Sun, which I didn't really need, but it was a nice bonus to get. You got the Oskia City Life Cleansing Concentrate, a fresh sugar lip balm, which has, I believe, and yep, yeah, it's got an SPF of 15 in it. I've had a few of these and I have said before they're very melty. I feel like it's a strange one to have decided to put in like a sunshine box but it's got the SPF which is obviously why it's in there and I do like them they're just very very melty and then I also got a deodorant which I haven't used yet so I ended up putting the cost of that box in as my replacement because it was replacing my SPF with this I haven't added these things into my beauty inventory yet and that's the only thing sometimes you get these really good deals which save you money in terms of the RRP of the product but when you're doing like your beauty inventory and trying to be in that sort of beauty rehab mindset this can be a massive whack onto it but I feel like everything that's in this box is something that I will use and move out before the end of the year so it's not like a cost that's adding up the way that like if I add an eyeshadow palette in there we know it's going to probably be there for multiple years before I either use it up or declutter it whereas 
I feel like everything here is something that I'm going to finish quite quickly. So that ended up being £40 in replacements. But I feel like I feel like I made the right choice in that the La Roche Posay one would have been half the price. I would have saved £20, but I got all this other stuff that is going to save me buying those things in the long run and I get two SPFs and yeah, so spent £40 on the Cult Beauty Sunshine Box in my replacements category. So that took my total monthly expenditure for the month of April to £184.70. So I had been trying to save £100. What I've saved all in is £67.44 to roll over to next month. So I would have needed to have saved just under £33 to get the £100 saved, which if my replacement hadn't run out when it did or you know, if I had been a little bit more under on my work lunches, I would have probably done, but I feel like, as I said, I'm now not going to need to replace SBF for quite a while, so it's all right. I feel like it's sometimes, again, kind of similar to what I said last month where I bought like the audible credits and then it saved me future money, or like I paid my nail appointment last month, which will happen in the month of May, which saves me paying it then, and I kind of feel like that's what getting that cult beauty box did was it saved me money in the future even though it was an expense now so I'm okay with it and obviously I'm still well under my budget I just didn't save as much of my budget as I had aimed to but anyway we are now going into May so restrictions have lifted here in Scotland I'm getting my hair done next month which will be a big expenditure I'm going to see my friends again so my socialising is going to be up so I feel like May is I feel like it's almost like January to April have been these sort of dry runs at it and May is going to be like a bit of a shock in terms of all the things that are going to be open and that I'm going to start spending on again that I just haven't been able to in the first couple of months of the year. So yeah, I feel like May's video could be a bit more angst ridden than these videos have been so far. I feel like my main source of angst with the budgeting at the moment is that I know it's going to get harder now kind of thing and I knew that that was always going to happen that was why I was trying to save a little bit of money this month so I'm opening May with a budget of £317.44 so I'm getting my hair done which will be about £150 of that straight away and I'm getting my nails done but I paid that already last month so we'll see what happens in May as I said I feel like May could be a little bit more angsty We'll just, I'm not going to set any goals, I'm just going to see what happens and report back in that video. So thank you very much for watching this one, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!